hi my name is Sherhoz Ahmed and uh, in this video we are gonna do some questions related to the motion along a straight line uh, of the Sahabis curriculum so let's move on to the first question the first question says that state the difference between the length of path and the displacement of particle along a straight line so we have to tell the difference so length of the path means the total distance from one point to another and the displacement of a particle along a straight line means the shortest distance from one point to another for example if we have point A over here and point B over here so an object moves from point A to point B in this time by covering this length so the total distance that have been that have been covered during this length will be called the length of the path but if we move directly from point A to point B then this will be considered as the displacement so this will be considered as the displacement and this will be the length of the path that will be considered as the distance all right so let's move to part b in part b it says a particle p moves along a directed straight line from position a of x1 equals to 8 centimeter to position b of x2 equals to minus 4 centimeter so let's suppose we have a line over here this is zero x1 the position x1 is at 8 centimeter so this position is x1 that is equal to 8 centimeter so the particle was present at this position and then it moved to position x2 that is at negative 4 so x2 will be somewhere here that will be equal to negative 4 centimeters so the particle has traveled from this position x1 to x2 right over here and we have to find the displacement and length of the path so the shortest distance from x1 to x2 is uh, 12 like from here to here it's 8 from here to here it's 4 but they are asking about the displacement so as the particle has moved towards left so it has displacement has a certain direction so it has moved towards left so it will be negative 12 and the length of the path will be only 12 so for the displacement i'll write it as a negative 12 centimeter and for the length i'll just write 12 centimeters now i i it says in what sense is the displacement of p so we will say the displacement is in the negative x-axis direction i'll just write it over here displacement is in the direction of negative x-axis displacement is in the direction of negative x-axis all right so this is it for this question all right so uh, let's see this next question it says you drive 120 km along a straight road in one direction for two hours then in the opposite direction back to the starting point in another three hours what is your average velocity so the formula for the average velocity is the rate of change of uh, displacement like total displacement over total time is the formula for average velocity so total displacement divided by total time so for this one the total displacement is zero because the car has uh, driven 120 mil, uh, 120 kilometer in the forward direction and then it has uh, come back to the point where it started so the total displacement will become equal to zero so zero over time will become equal to zero so the average velocity for this one will be equal to zero all right so i'll just write zero over here verify that your average speed is 48 km per hour so average speed is different from average velocity the formula for the average speed is total distance over total time so average speed is equal to total distance over total time so the total distance that the car has covered will be equal to 120 in the forward direction and 120 in the backward direction divide by total time so it's like two hours plus three hours that will be five so 120 plus 120 it will become 240 so 240 divided by 5 will be our average speed so let's divide it and check whether we get 48 yeah it's 48 so the average speed is 48 kilometer per hour now 
part C. It says it is unlikely, even impossible, that you were driving at 48 km per hour all the time. Think of some instance where the speed is much less than that value. So, number one, due to the traffic jam. In a traffic jam, the speed will not be equal to 48 km per hour or during some humps on the road when pedestrian are crossing the road or it may be there may be any traffic signal at the traffic signal the speed could be equal to zero or when the car is taking a u-turn at the u-turn the speed will not necessarily be equal to 48 km per hour so these were some of the reasons where the speed will uh, is unlikely to or even impossible to be equal to 48 km per hour now for part d it says what when is the speed necessarily zero so we have to find out the instance where the speed is necessarily will be equal to zero so it will be at the starting point and at the finish point at the starting and at the finishing so at the starting and finishing the speed will necessarily be equal to zero so this is it for this question all right so now let's do a question related to some um, a displacement time graph so we have been given a displacement time graph that shows the that represents the motion of a particle moving along a horizontal axis in 20 seconds so a particle is moving in the horizontal direction in 20 seconds so it's a determine the time interval during which the particle position does not change so we have to tell the time interval the interval where the position of the particle did not change so from here to here the position of the particle did not change and uh, from here to here the position of the particle did not change so this time interval will be from 0 to 3 seconds and this time interval will be um, you can say this will be 12 to 13 seconds so from 0 to 3 seconds and 12 to 13 seconds the position of the particle did not change now in the part where it says what can we say about the speed of the particle in that time interval so the speed of the particle will be zero because the position did not change it means the particle was not moving so when the particle was not moving so the speed will be equal to zero now what is the farthest point from the origin and uh, what is the corresponding time so the farthest point from the origin is over here so that is six centimeter so we'll say that it's uh, six centimeter and the time at that instant was 10 seconds so 6 centimeter at 10 seconds now at what instant is the puck at the origin so the puck was at the origin at this position so it was at the origin at 17 second so it was quite simple question so this is how you can predict some you know, predict your uh, displacement time and speed from a displacement time graph Remember that the gradient of the displacement time graph gives us the speed. So that's why I said in part B that the speed of the particle will be zero because over here we can see a horizontal line. So the gradient of the horizontal line is zero. Over here there's another horizontal line. So the gradient of the horizontal line is zero. So that's why the speed of the particle in these time intervals will be equal to zero. All right, so let's do a question related to the velocity time graph. So we have been given a velocity time graph in which you have the velocity in the y-axis and the time in the x-axis. Okay, so it says the graph represents the VT graph of a motorcycle in 24 seconds. So from here to here, the time is 24 seconds. So part A, it says find the interval or instant where the velocity is positive. So we will write down the time instance where the velocity is positive. So velocity is positive starting from here in the positive direction positive direction positive 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 up till here so the velocity is positive from 0 to 15 seconds and it is negative over here this the velocity is 0 so it started to be negative from this point all the way up till here so it's uh, negative from 17 seconds to 24 seconds so this is the time where the velocity is negative now in part b it says find the time interval on instance where the velocity is positive and increasing 
so we have to see it should be positive and increasing so it lies within this region positive and increasing so the velocity is positive and increasing during this time interval so I'll write them sep uh, separately basically it says uh, yeah so yeah so the time intervals from it from 0 to 4 seconds the velocity is increasing and is positive from here to here like from 4 seconds to uh, this one is uh, 9 seconds so it is also positive and increasing from 4 to 9 seconds now from here to here it is positive but it is 0 no uh, it is not increasing it's positive but it's not increasing from here to here it's positive but it's decreasing so these are the two time intervals now in the next one it says what is the rate at which the velocity increases in these cases so we have to find out the rate rate of velocity means you have to work out the gradient so from 0 to 4 we'll find out the gradient by doing rise over run so let me just zoom it in all right so we have to find or work out the velocity in this interval and we have to find out the uh, rate of increase in velocity in this interval and in this interval so in this interval the velocity will be equal to the rise is of 24 and the run is of 4 so the rate of increase of velocity will be equal to from 0 to 4 seconds it will be 24 over 4 that is equal to 6 and the unit will be equal to 6 meters per second square now from here to here you can see the rise is of 6 units and the run is of um, 9 minus 4 of 5 units this is 5 this is 6 so the rise is of 6 and the run is of 5 units so from uh, 4 seconds to 9 seconds it will be like this 6 over 5 so 6 over 5 will be equal to 1.2 meters per second square so this is the rate of increase of uh, velocity in during these two time intervals okay so the next part it says how can we describe the variation of speed in these cases so over here we had the uh, rate of increase of speed as 1.2 over here we had the rate of increase of speed to be 6 so the variation of speed in this case so we can say that the, the speed is increasing rapidly from 0 to 4 seconds and it is increasing slowly from 4 seconds to 9 seconds so this is how we can describe the variation of the speed in these cases or we can say the rate of increase of speed from 0 to 4 seconds is more than the rate of increase of speed between 4 to 9 seconds so this is it for this question Thank you.